Hey, what's up people? I'm back, working on the car, getting ready for the next race, July 5th, and uh, let's see what's going on. All right, so, here's some things we're gonna work on. We have got to get the hub over rotor type brakes off. And if you look at the other side, they're totally scored. Yeah, just take a look at that right there. I wrecked these. By the way, the pack go to zero on this side. So these have to come off, but I have the greatest replacement. So I'm gonna walk you through the process for doing this. Um, after you get the calipers and the caliper bracket off, you need to um, come back to the back and take off the screws inside here. This one, for example. Sorry, it's so hard to see. There's four of those that hold the wheel bearing on. And when those four are taken out, those are 12 point, by the way. I think they're 12 millimeter, 12 points. Um, the whole brake, hub, and assembly will come out with the bearing. And I've also uh, broke loose the axle nuts and pushed in the axles. And they're pretty easy to push in, even if I can, to that point. Which allows you to get enough room back there. My son is having so much fun right now. Um, to get those bearing bolts out. So doing the rotor over hub conversion on this car, the CB7, and you want to keep the 4x114.3 millimeter bolt pattern, you really only have one option, that's to grab the hubs um, uh, from a 98 or 99 Acura CL 2.3 liter. It's 97, has the hub over rotor identical to ours right now. And so if you want to stay four leg, you really need to go with the hub from a 98 or 99 Acura CL 2.3 liter, not the V6 3.0. Then, after you get that hub and you pair it with the bearing from a 1997 Accord or that CL, um, you will need the rotors. Now, I wouldn't take the rotors from the junkyard that you get. I'll get some nice ones. And these are the ones that I got. These are Power Stops Evolution. And um, they are fantastic. They got the slots, which I've never had before, and the drills for the cooling, the slots for the, the dust. And, I'm, you know, I really think it's going to help me a lot on the studs like this, just making sure they match, it's a perfect match. So as you can tell right now, um, I have <laughs> non-stock brakes. These are not the stock diameter, these are 202 millimeter, the 25 uh, millimeter thick uh, wagon style rotors from a CB7, but they've been drilled by Taz Auto, that company's now defunct. And so I've got 25T uh, caliper bracket and an innocent caliper. So these are all the bigger brake upgrades from the Accord with the drilled rotors, but they're still hub over. So uh, what I have here, these are 11.1 inch rotors. These are not from an, they do not fit with a 98 or 99 Acura CL 2.3 liter. They fit with a 98 or 99 Acura CL 3.0 liter, which have the exact same brake diameter and thickness, the 25 millimeter and the 282 millimeter diameter. And so this will be a perfect swap for my 25T and Nissan calipers. Now these are single piston Nissans, but um, they are not the Akebonos. If you are trying to do this with Akebono um, stock calipers, you're gonna need to switch to Nissan. That's Daddy. the idea. And I know most of you do rotor over hub, go to five lug and you use a Honda Odyssey front knuckle and all that. That's fine, That's I just, I like my wheels. I don't have any issue with the, the bolt pattern with them, they're fine. And uh, so that's the route I'm taking. Some other things I'm doing that are long overdue include redoing the pads for the rear brakes. I just took these from an EX Accord, deleting the ABS, and just slapped these on as you saw in a previous video. But I never bothered to check the pads or replace them. The rear pistons you have to twist. Um, so you need the proper tool to twist that and it'll go back and you have to line it up with the uh, inner pad uh, pick right there so that it lines up, you can see how it had to line up. And so um, that's a little annoying, so you need a tool for that. But uh, other than that, you need to get new pads on. Another thing I'm actually really excited about is this. Oh my gosh. It's just an absolutely beautiful piece. I know they don't exist anymore, but a lot of people bought their products to try and sell them. It's a really nice rear tow hook. Um, I'm gonna put it down here on this thing, so I'm gonna need to drill some space to get the uh, bolts to slide through and everything, but um, I'm really, really excited about those, this going on. So I, I'm safe if I you know, 
go off the track in the sand on the rear. In the front, I, I didn't really see a place to put a tow hook, and I don't really need to because I've got these right here on the ESP bar. Okay, so some guy recommended that you can get these when you push the axle back in. When you push that back in as far as it can go, you can get a spanner, a spanner around all these bolts. I know you can't see it right now because it's too dark, but for the bearings, um, I could only get one loose. I can only get one in there. They do not come loose if you hit the spanner with a hammer. And the axle, even though it's farther enough back, it's not far enough to get them all. So I'm going to recommend that we undo the lower ball joint and um, able to swing this guy out. Okay, I got it out. And here it is. So in the process, you will go around on the inside here and you will take a large screwdriver and you'll hammer right where the um, hub hits uh, the knuckle on the inside to get it out. You'll pry in between there. And you're gonna damage, most likely, your bearing. You are not gonna be reusing these bearings anyway because you probably don't have a press. All right, so I just got a package. Uh, I think I know what this is, but let's see what's inside here. Well, I mean, this definitely looks smaller than those hubs, but these are my hub bearing. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Pressed in and everything. Let me take this out. Look at this. Wow. More parts. Oh, yes. Okay. 9643, that's the lower ball joints for the front knuckles. All right, to get the old ball joints out, we need to take that snap ring off with snap ring pliers, and then take 1316 socket and uh, put on the end here, and then beat it out. But that snap ring has to come off first. Okay, so after trying several different methods with Lots of different tools. To get it out, I found that this guy works the best. You put one end right here. Don't hit it with a hammer. And you put the other end right on the edge there and it stays. Look what's popping out. You just tighten that 17 millimeter six point socket. And look at that, it's coming out. Just so you guys know, beating it with a hammer might not work for you. I did not have enough leverage, obviously. Okay, so new ball joint going in. Make sure you clean the uh, sleeve for the ball joint. Get some brake cleaner and then get some WD-40 or some equivalent to help it slide in there. And um, don't put the snap ring on yet. And then this is how you're gonna press it in. It's a big ball joint press from O'Reilly's or whatever store that lets you rent them. You take the piece for the uh, bottom. It's the insert for the uh, bottom of the ball joint stud and you place that on the bottom here then you take the smallest of the um, inner tubes and you whatever they're called <laughs> inserts and you place that right there and that will uh, this will press down and the ball joint will slide through here because it's wider than the ball joint so finger tight it's gonna look like this and um, you need a 22 millimeter wrench to wrench on that and it will press it down and you turn till you can't turn anymore, and that's how you know it bottomed out. You gotta make sure it bottoms out, or the snap ring will not go in its little um, groove. So this is what it looks like when it's bottomed out. And you can see right there the groove, right at the top where the snap ring is supposed to go. And so, just take your snap ring pliers. I like the ones that point straight up for this application, and just pull them apart. And Put them on. So next I'm gonna put the hub and bearing assembly on before I do anything with the ball joint and the lower control arm, because I can easily move it and separate it. And uh, you uh, press the hub bearing, the bearing really, into the knuckle by tightening the four 12.10 um, millimeter bolts. All right, I obviously got the hub on. You got to torque those bolts down to 33 foot-pounds. And then I stuck the rotor on top. 
and uh, the set screws, everything that I got from O'Reilly's works great uh, with those studs. Now the moment of truth. Will that caliper bracket fit around here or did I get the wrong parts? Looks good. And voila. Yes. So beautiful. It all lines up absolutely perfectly. Caliper bracket, perfect. It literally is a perfect swap. All right, so I got the rear brakes all redone and everything. Now it's time for this. Right like this. If I put it down too low, it only get one hole. Put it up higher, get two holes. Looks pretty straight. Okay, so to install this tow hook, what I actually had to do is I had to drill a giant hole through here and then shove the bolt heads through. I used a lock washer and an oversized washer for both of them. It's kind of hard to see that, but um, it's really sturdy. So under the hood, I decided to delete EGR finally. And now I have a perfectly functional OBD1 EGR for sale. And I'm gonna redo the seals for the fuel inlet, um, the banjo. Sweet, so my uh, oil pressure gauge and feed line, 1 8 MPT came in. And I put them on here. It's liquid filled so it doesn't shake so much when um, I am uh, you know, going around corners and stuff because I don't want the dial to shake. And uh, you know, I thought it was gonna come with mounting gear, but it doesn't, unfortunately. So I'm trying to cut this metal plate that it would just fit inside, but now I'm gonna have to do a little more than that to get this thing actually sit in one spot. So that's the plan. And uh, you know, time to go check out and see how this is actually gonna work. Okay, so this stuff is what you get with your K-tuned kit. This goes into that larger bolt. Uh, needs to stay on the block. I had a heck of a time getting that separated from the sender unit. I actually destroyed my sender unit in the process, so I have to get a new one. But this goes in between that bolt on the block and the sender unit will go up here to the 1 8 BPT thread. And then um, on these uh, K-tuned units here, which are awesome, you have this jam nut and you need to install it with that backed all the way out. You get a um, a washer that you oil up and you put right here. There's a secondary um, oil uh, ring inside here. So there's a double seal, man. This thing is great. And um, I'm gonna Teflon everything above this. I'm gonna Teflon all of this, all of these plugs, because I only need one, one eighth MPT, and that can go in here. And the other two can get plugged up with those, all of it Tefloned, and um, they provide the Teflon tape you should use too. And at the other end, my oil pressure gauge. This is only three feet long. Really hope that's long enough to go all the way to the cabin. So I got that um, on and plugged in. K-tuned adapter looks really nice. That's where the uh, line, the oil feed line is gonna go, but I did not <laughs> plan properly, so I do not have a three foot line, a four foot line like I needed. I thought I could do a three foot. And uh, let me show you where that goes through once I get it. Send it up there and through. You can see it right there. That's the uh, cruise control. I, I put a hole in that. And um, when I send it through there, that's going to come under the steering column. And then when it's in there, it's going to go through my partially taken apart dash, come right through here and go to the back of this. I just made this uh, recently. Um, got my Marshall gauge in there. Cut a hole in this piece of aluminum alloy, cut the aluminum alloy up, screwed it to the car. It's a good spot. It's got good contrast actually, so I can see it pretty well. Um, and then I just kind of cut that hole just enough so that it um, slides in there. And then that's where the other end goes. These are 4AN adapters, Teflon tape everywhere. Um, and they'll be good to go. And here's the uh, little feed line installed. Going through the cruise control nipple there. And then what I ended up having to do was to, so it wouldn't pull on it, it was just long enough, because I had to install it on this side instead of the side it was on. But um, it seems to be pretty sturdy. And it's in a real good view for me as the driver.
so I could be watching it. Check it out. Yeah. Doing a little back test, back road test um, out here. And uh, no leaks. Had to do a little bit of down by the uh, K tune adapter. Had a little leakage issue because the uh, jam nut that goes with the block is not really compatible with it. It's not, it's got this divot in it that the original sender unit's supposed to sit in. And so it doesn't quite seal, so I had to make a gasket. And, um, but yeah, I'm just gonna check them when we get home. Tire pressures, wash, vacuum, and we'll be uh, good for the race. All right, people, she's all ready to go behind me. A Little bit of leakage, either from the one of the balance shaft seals or the rear of the oil pan, I'm not sure, but I got my other two oil leaks fixed from the uh, oil drain plug and the oil sending unit. So those are good. So I'm ready to go. She's ready to go. Next time you see us, we'll be at the track. Thanks for watching. This is Falconator, signing out.